Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode. I've mentioned on past occasions that I collect Fort Henry Guards. While I don't have as large a collection as some, and I'm looking at you, and you know who you are, we were talking on Tuesday, I think I have enough that an episode was due. The Guard and its related figures have been done by various makers, including Britons, Blenheim, Spirit of the Empire, Pride of the Nation, Good Soldiers, and now Replica Metal Soldiers, to name just a few. Over time, figures have included the Guard in various poses, a drum and fife band, its goat mascot and escort, pioneers, artillerymen, and color guard. Likely there are others which I haven't discovered yet. While these figures can still be bought from makers or found at shows, some were only sold at Fort Henry back in the day, and many an older collector has fond memories of visiting the fort and walking away with a few figures or a box set. I've talked about Fort Henry in episode 19, and if you are traveling to Canada and you find yourself in the eastern part of Ontario or in Kingston, it's a must stop, particularly in the summer. I'll leave a link to its website in the description. So let's dig into my collection. In my opinion, the figures have become iconic, like the Black Watch, French Foreign Legion, Zulu Warriors, or U.S. Marines. And to me, this is surprising, given the Fort Henry Guard is a post-World War II creation of the fort itself, there to breathe life and living history into the walls of the fort, using reenactors and ceremonies to educate and entertain visitors. I believe Britain saw this as a way to capture new market share and thus chose to produce the guard as figures in 1957. I've chosen to start with my Britain's figures. After all, it was Britain's which introduced mass production of the Fort Henry Guard to the toy soldier world. Now Britain's released its first sets of the Guard in 1957 and ended production in 1966. Britain's did a number of sets, including, according to James Opie, several not listed in its catalog but sold at Fort Henry itself between 1959 and 1965. If you want more info on the Britain's production runs, check out the books by Opie or Joe Wallace in episode 14. My collection is notable for not being a preponderance of Britain's figures, but as I always do, here is a list of the Britain's I have. Six figures of set number 2148, but without the goat mascot. I'll have to pick that up later. Two figures of set number 2182, Fort Henry Guard Pioneer. Two of set number 2183, Fort Henry Cannon. And these are identical to set number 2189. As you can see, they are damaged, missing the cannonballs and the end piece. Britain's re-released additional guards in set number 8823 in 1993 and sets 40192 and 40193 from 2001 to 2004. I have number 8823, the Pioneer Centenary figure, and 40193, mascot and escort both of which I snagged from the Guards Toy Soldier Center in London. 40192 and 40193 are much crisper and sharper, both in painting and style, than the earlier post-war versions. According to Opie, many of these re-releases ended up not selling as well as hoped, with the surplus finding its way to MKL model toy soldiers at the now shuttered Guards Toy Soldier Center in London. I recall seeing the 40192 figures being sold by the Kenwoods at the London Toy Soldier shows. Mike Opie remarks, the price was hard to beat, and I bought eight. You can see these here next to the earlier Britain's versions. 
Later, I will place these with the Pride of the Nation figures for a wider comparison. Next up are these Fort Henry Band figures I purchased from Andy Morant a couple of years ago. There are 10 in total, and it is correct for set number 2178. However, these figures came unboxed, so I don't know if it is an unboxed set number 2178 or just 10 pieces that Andy came across that matched. Either way, they are in great condition given their age. I have a number of figures from LaBelle's, a store that used to exist in Toronto, Ontario. Fort Henry Band LABFHG3 is a 16-piece band that I bought from Scott Dummett Presents. It is slightly larger due to its thicker base, and I think the painting is crisper. Both of these bands you may have already seen in episode 12, Bands, Bands, Bands. I'm hoping I have them in correct marching order. A good friend and knowledgeable person pointed out that it matters, and yes, he is right. Sometimes it's the simple things that you can get wrong, and you should get right. So, drums to the front, fifes to the rear. This is another piece sold by LaBelle's, a singular Fort Henry Guard LAB FHG4, but it came with a Britain sentry box. I believe this was an effort similar to the Britain's number 2159. If you've been to Fort Henry, you can't help but notice it is one giant artillery emplacement, with most of the guns facing the St. Lawrence River and Upper New York State. Draw whatever conclusions you can from that. So that means you have to have Royal Artillery. To that end, I have two sets. The first is a six-figure set from Good Soldiers, which I bought from Alan Goodwin at the London Toy Soldier Show in 2018. Now I've added one of the Britain's cannons to this grouping. The second is from LaBelle's, number LABFHG2, and it consists of three figures that came with a cannon. These already appeared in episode 16 entitled Artillery Part 2. The color guard is comprised of six figures and was made by Blenheim. The regimental colors represent the 33 British and six Canadian regiments that have served at the fort. I bought this from a friend of mine and I think it looks good and is consistent with the other figures I have. I've spoken about the former Canadian maker Spirit of the Empire before. Here are six figures I have, one marching at slope and five standing at attention. Now you notice these are a bit larger than the Britain's figures and they are about 56 millimeters in height. I like the level of detail and colors that Spirit used here. I'm always on the hunt for Spirit stuff and certainly would like to have more guards. This next grouping of figures are from Pride of the Nation produced by Scott Dummett of Ontario. I really like the stuff that he does and this set appeared recently in episode 19 but here they are again. I have three loose figures also from Scott. Set number 0034 is five Fort Henry figures standing firing with an officer. Set number 0035 is again five figures at attention with a bugler. Now I've said before that in my opinion, these are a good fit with the Britons pieces. Take a look at these next to the Britons.
These two Fife players are also made by Scott Dummett, and I'm guessing, probably right, that they were part of a much larger Fort Henry band that he made. While they are wearing a red uniform, note how they are still compatible with the Britain's Fife players in white alongside. Lastly, here are six figures which I have no recollection of where I got them. <laughs> I guess that comes with age or just having too many. They are solid cast, and they stand about 56 millimeters in height, but there's no ID on the base. If anyone has any idea, leave it in the comments below. I'd sure like to know. Thank you very much. So that concludes my Fort Henry Guard. If you want to know more about the fort, I'll leave some links in the description paragraph, or take a look at episode 19, called Three Canadian Forts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like or subscribe buttons or share it with a friend. Thank you very much and keep collecting.